Good morning, good afternoon. I am not T. Ray. <laughs> um, some call me Ray Ray, um, but today you can just call me Raymond Brown. Grow to great, partnering for your success. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? But I don't want to start there. I actually want to tell you where this concept actually came from. About two years ago, at JMU's diversity conference, I had the, the humble opportunity to present on another topic, but very similar in nature. It was called Grow or Die. Does that sound exciting? <laughs> <laughs> Grow or Die. If you actually think about that statement in and of itself, it's actually very observable in the way life and nature actually functions. Either you're growing, heading in a direction going forward, going upward or expanding. But if not that, by default, you're going backwards. You're going low. You're decreasing. And that movement is always death. And so as I think about this concept, grow to die, it wasn't anything new to me. It actually came from a similar work by the man George Land. Grow or die. As you can see up on the screen, the title of the work was The Unifying Principle of Transformation. From this work, he suggested there's three phases of growth. Those three phases being accretion, replication, and mutualism. All of these three phases we experience at some point in life. So as I walk through these phases, there will be some of these phases that you'll try to say, that's not me. But as I walk through, it'll be, it'll be very apparent that these are stages that we all walk through. And as I walk through these stages, what I want you all to do is to, is to pay very close attention to this last stage up, up here, and that's the mutualism. Because it's through mutualism that we actually create wealth, innovation, and diversity. And so we have three stages, accretion, replication, and mutualism. Let's start with accretion. What is accretion? As you can see up on the screen, it's the me stage. It's that idea that all that I do, all of the energy that I put out, anything that I do in, in the direction I move in is all about me and myself. There's a character that I once watched growing up. His name's Beaker. And if anybody knows his language, you understand. You don't understand his language, actually. You, you hear the only thing coming out of his mouth is me, 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 me. <laughs> now, for those who don't know this character, he often was the person within the scope of the, the, the clip as one who was very clumsy, one who had a lot of mishaps, one who couldn't just get it together. Now, I, I chose this specifically because for us, we all have this stage that we walk through. The me stage. By the show of hands, how many of you all have young kids? OK, by, by a show of hands, keep your hands up. How many of you all have been a kid? <laughs> OK, you can put your hands down. So we all experience this me stage. We know what it feels like. If I can characterize it, it's, it's very much seen in the life of, a, of an infant. An infant doesn't have any idea of how to do anything or how to go about serving anyone. And so all that infant's responses and movements and actions are, are, are a plea and a drive and an intention to serve itself. Now that's not a bad thing, because from that state, from that motivation, we, we will survive. But that doesn't last long, which is why I bring up Beaker here. Because after a while, if you're only about yourself, if you only bring in ideas and things to only serve yourself, then soon you won't have a, a plethora of tools, resources, or ideas to help you move and shift and adapt when things don't go the way you want them to. We see that in the temper tantrum of our kids, right? Hey, we see it in the temper tantrums we throw, right? And so the me stage. Now again, we need this stage. And all of us, because we've been infants, we walk through this stage. Because at some level, we need to establish self-identity. And we need to establish, what does it take for me, me to survive? 
But again, we cannot stop there. And so as he, he lays this stage out, he says the next stage that we have to move through, the next stage that actually is an indicator of us successfully understanding our way in the world is replication. And that's the mind or your stage. Now, why do I use those two terms? Because in this stage, all that you do is to absorb others and others' ideas to actually replicate yourself. And so as you think about mind, you get to a point where you understand what success means. And so then from that, you partner with other individuals, with other ideas and other resources that help to replicate that. Now, again, that is a great thing, right? Until you get to the point where there's a threat or an individual comes around and poses a different thought or a competitor comes around that's doing something new or innovative. Now you're in trouble. And so as we think about this, the positives of, of this stage is that when we replicate and when we get with groups of people who are like us, it's called sameness, then we actually are, are able to communicate quickly. We actually can increase the predictability of how things are going to act and how things are going to go. And even further, we don't have to work hard, right? We have our own language, we have our own jokes. I mean, things just are, we're in our comfort zone. That's what we call it, right? And so this looks like us going to the same conferences with the same people or us joining the same clubs. It's just a natural way that we operate and move. But again, not a bad thing because in and of itself, it is a stage of growth. But we can't stop there. And this is what I want to land on you right now that I think George Land in his work, Grow or Die, was really trying to suggest is that we, we go from the me-centeredness to the mind, your centeredness, to the we-centeredness. But we can't get there if we're clinging to sameness. And uh, my good friend right here, my, my co-facilitator behind me, Bruce Lee, he says, he says this, people try to hold on to sameness, but it's in the sameness that we prevent ourselves from growing. You know, one of the things I love to do is, is work out um, I don't know if you all can tell I'm pretty ripped underneath this jacket here, right? <laughs> um, and one of the things I, I do is I go to the gym, and I mean, I'm not very creative. I actually go to the same machines in the same order. I'll probably just switch that up. So if you have any uh, trainers in here, please help me out after this. Um, but in that, in, in, that, in that example, really, I'm not challenging myself. I come home, and my wife says every time, I don't, see no, I don't see nothing different, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so um, I'm still working through it in my mind. <laughs> um, but I, I, what the point is, is I'm going to have to change it up. I'm going to have to go on a different machine to work out a different body part. But before I do that, I actually have to take on a different mindset and actually move myself out of my comfort zone to do something different. Because it's in that different is when we actually start to grow. It's actually when we start to gain and it starts to start to gather. And we actually start to create a, a different and a newness that wasn't there before. And so as I think about this last stage that I want to suggest, is that's mutualism. That's the we stage. That's the stage that when we get to a point when we realize is that we can't do it all on our own, and we can't continue to grow, flourish, and innovate if we keep bringing in the same ideas and thoughts. And so through the concept of mutualism, we actually step into an attitude, an understanding that actually taking on somebody else's different perspective, their different idea, or taking this, this random resource, whatever it may be, is actually what I need to stay agile and to stay ready and equipped in a fast-changing business market and society. And so as we look at this, I ask, I ask you all, as you're look, taking on this concept, as you're here at this event, what does that look like for you as a local business leader? When's the last time you had lunch or dinner with a, with a business partner that's not in the same industry as you? When's the last time you, you sat down with a different couple of a different nationality or a different race? 
is as we start to get into the same spaces and have dialogues with different people of different ideas, is when we really start to create, again, a newness. That newness is what we're trying to bring here to the valley. Um, and, that is, and that is solely why we need to start to ask questions curiously. As you're thinking about all that you're doing and as you're operating day to day in your busyness, just take a step back and ask one or two questions curiously a day. What does that do? That actually opens you up to take in new information, new ideas, new data. That's what we need in order to stay innovative and creative and to be ready to take on, again, this fast and changing business market and society. Two, you like my friend, right? <laughs> Big ears, if I can put it, put it that way. Listen attentively. Oftentimes, if I can jump us back to the replication stage, oftentimes we're listening to people to pick up the same ideas and to conform others to what we want. But I would encourage and challenge us today to actually step back and listen with intent and attentively to what others have to say, to their ideas, what they're doing, and how they're innovating. Because it may be that partnership that may launch the next new thing for the Valley. And then this last thought here that I want you to take on, learn from everyone. I heard it once put, everyone is an expert in something you're not an expert in. This is something that takes humility. We don't know it all. No one in here. But as we, again, open ourselves up and we look at everyone and value everyone for who they are, their perspective, and where they're coming from, we position ourselves to learn something from everyone. Again, as we ask questions curiously, as we listen attentively, and as we learn from everyone, we position ourselves well for this concept of mutualism, exchanging new and radical different ideas with others for the sake of building wealth, innovation, and diversity. So what does that have to do with our event here? Again, the title, the mission. I'll just talk to one of the creators of this event. What's the hope today? Is that today you all would understand this concept of mutualism or more importantly, partnering with one another to create success. Valley Business Keynote, in bringing local leaders together to engage new ideas. That's what we're trying to do. The hope is that today you'll leave with at least one nugget. If not a nugget, you'll leave with a partnership, with someone that would help change your paradigm just enough to keep you fresh, to keep you productive, to keep you innovative, to position the valley to be attractive and to unleash the potential that's here. If I can give one example of that, and what we're going to specifically talk about today is around charity and nonprofits. We had a race that just went down on Saturday. By a show of hands, how many participated in that race? Yeah, we have a good number in here. Man, that was such an awesome event. I talked to the creator of the event. Um, his name was uh, Chad Lehman of Fine Earth. Um, we had a conversation earlier today because I wanted to know what, what, what made you, what prompted you to put this event on? Well, you know, Chad, in talking to him, he, he didn't mind me sharing this of him. Chad is, is one, he would, he would confess that he, he suffers with depression. Now, Ironically enough, Chad's not a veteran or a warrior, but Chad understood the struggle that our warriors are going through with PTSD. And even though he wasn't a veteran or warrior, he still saw himself as a person who can come alongside and partner with a cause to bring some resources and to bring some new ideas to help with this issue. And so Chad went four weeks hit the ground himself, and was able to raise about $65,000. Isn't that great? Right? <laughs> the 
You know, but even better, Chad got to the point where he realized, hey, I don't have to do this by myself. So Chad calls Harrisonburg local squatting team. He calls some local businesses. And he connected with some volunteers. And within under eight weeks, they were able to raise an additional $180,000 and put on an all-day event for the local community. Partnership at its finest. So if there's anything I can encourage you with or any way I can challenge you, there's one thing I, I, I want you to hear and, and two things I want you to be encouraged by. The one thing is we need to partner. Because again, in partnership is when we actually create the most success. Two, today we'll talk about charity and nonprofit through our excellent speaker, Dan. We're doing a great job here in the Valley. I'm proud to be a part of this community. We're doing a wonderful job. But what Dan is going to do, he's going to present some wonderful new ideas about charity and nonprofit. Take these thoughts, take these ideas, and ask yourselves, how can I use these to, to do better? And then lastly, and I think most importantly, as individuals, collectively as a community, how can we every day start to radically think differently in general? There's an opportunity for us as we stay open to new ideas, new thoughts, new perspectives, and new people. And I would say, and then with this, that it's in this spot, that's in this mindset of mutualism, in this mindset of partnering, in this mindset of being open to new ideas, new resources, new people, that we step into the biggest room of our life. And that's the room for growth. Thank you.